Hi guys, welcome to my new channel. So you guys have asked for more content and more things that are going around on around here at Cuz We Can Farms. And that's what this channel is gonna be about. This way we don't have to give you a 45 minute video over on Cuz We Can Farms trying to show you what we're doing with animals and gardening and everything else that goes on around here on the farm. So right now I'm in our makeshift barn that um, was built for the goats for this winter only. Um, so far it's working fairly well. Um, it's definitely not something that I want to do for a couple of years, but I could do this for a couple of years. And this area that the goats are in is actually gonna end up being um, a very large garden, hopefully a CSA type garden. That is the dream on that one. So what we're doing here in the barn is a deep letter method so that we have a really good compost for the garden um, this hopefully next season as we're building garden beds. But let's get to feeding them. It really does take two people because one person can stand inside and the other person can hand you all the things. should be on her way with the water buckets. So this is one of the main reasons why I'm not a huge fan of this particular system because it's, it really does take the two people. It's really difficult to come in with a grain, feed the animal and get out and get the others. And you obviously cannot have the buckets that the feed is in to um, inside here. So with the chickens not having the chicken coop, um, they come in here and roost and so that causes issues with uh, where our troughs could be for the feed to go in um, because we did not want those to get filled up with a whole bunch of chicken poop. So that's making it to where we absolutely have to come in. So. You know, uh, if I would have gotten the, the chicken coop finished and they could have been in that area and been roosting inside there instead of inside here, then that would have kind of solved that particular problem. But basically, this is what we do. One person stands in. Kira has definitely, while we've had COVID, has definitely been doing this on her own because she has had a lot less symptoms than uh, Kimmy and I have had. So that's, I guess, been a blessing for us, but not really for her. <laughs> so we are, like I said, doing the deep litter method in here. Um, and it definitely works. The chickens are not roosting up top anymore. They're kind of coming in here and laying down on the bedding and snuggling with the goats. And it's because there's heat coming up from the compost layering system that's been happening in here. So that is, um, helped I think quite a bit this winter because this has been um, the worst winter that they've had in this area for the last 10 years. And I have to say we've survived it so we all feel really good about living up here. <laughs> even Florida, even Miss Florida has, <laughs> has survived. Uh, okay, I don't really like the light in here but this is what it's going to be. <laughs> Um, until a goat knocks you guys over. So mostly this channel, because it's the farm to table, because we can farm to table channel, is going to talk about the food that we grow, the food that we raise um, for our table, for the pantry. Um, and so one of the things that is going to be happening is when Sissy's bred, 
uh, her babies are going to go to freezer camp. That is what they're going to do. Bud locked out. He was supposed to go to freezer camp, but he sucked up to Kimmy. <laughs> so he's our mascot. <laughs> Lucky guy. Lucky oh, guy. So uh, eventually I would really like to have probably three milk does. Uh, Sissy and Bud are the La Mancha Boar cross. The Boar goat is a meat goat. La Manchas are a milk goat. That way I can and be milking three goats um, every day to give us our uh, milk to, you know, our coffee, all of that kind of stuff, and um, cheeses and that kind of thing. Uh, eventually I would love to get a milk cow, but I just don't think that's something that's gonna happen yet. So this is what I can do right now. Um, fairly easily. Obviously this little barn can handle seven goats fairly easily. So I would be able to suction this off even more, give them a smaller inside area, which would help keep them warmer and have uh, three more does. So these guys that you see, the only two in here that are mine are Bud and Sissy. The others are my friend Carrie's. We're just keeping them here for her over the winter time because her place is not um, ready yet. <clears throat> so that's where all these extra goats come from. Um, so basically how we've been doing the water, like I said, Kira has been doing most of it since we've had COVID, but when we're feeling better and we can, we do a tag team system. So all of our water right now is stored in a thousand gallon tank. We pump that out of that into five gallon buckets walk it over here, pick it up and put it into, pour it into the actual tub for these guys. Right now we're not giving them very much. We're basically giving them what they can drink in one day and that's so that the water isn't freezing and then they can't get to it. Mancha goats are known for giving multiples when they give birth. Um, usually the first time that they're bred, you'll get one baby out of them. And if it happens to be a girl this next year, then that's a doe that I will keep. Um, <clears throat> but then there after that, the, probably the minimum you will get will be twins. Um, a lot of times you'll get triplets. They are known for producing a gallon of milk a day. And that makes them a really uh, good dairy animal to have and their milk is very sweet. And as long as you don't have a buck in the area, then you won't have goaty milk. It tastes just like cow's milk. It's very sweet. It's super yummy. Watch out, bud. Thank you, ma'am. <clears throat> And when they're full grown, and as far as for the amount of meat in the freezer that you get per um, animal that you process, um, La Manchas are a large goat. They're not the minis, they're not, um, uh, they're pretty big. So full grown, they're usually about 120 pounds. They do not produce a lot of meat on them. The boar goats are smaller, shorter, but they produce a lot of meat. So you get that shorter, stockier um, animal. So. Uh, usually in the past, whenever I've processed goats, I've gotten up between 40 and 60 pounds worth of freezer meat, um, out of each, um, animal that's been processed. So, uh, if you have twins or triplets, you can see how that could very easily get you a couple of hundred pounds of, um, meat very simply. So, how about Hey, you guys missed Kira actually giving them water. <laughs> so one of the other animals that we have here is ducks. These are Peking ducks. They are a meat breed. They do produce about five to eight pounds worth of meat when processed. 
They are not good mamas. Um, they're not known for sitting nests or something like that. So usually people that have Peking ducks um, either have another animal, another chicken, or another type of duck sit the eggs and then have, uh, or they have, they incubate them. Since we're off grid here, we're probably not gonna be doing a lot of incubation until we get our system, our solar system set up. And hopefully that will definitely be this year. Um, but if it's not, then I'm gonna have to look at another breed of duck that goes broody very easily that will sit these eggs. The other thing that ducks are really good at is producing a lot of eggs and they're really big starting out. Like these guys just started laying the other day and they are normal size large eggs. Unlike our chickens that just started laying and they're very cute tiny eggs. So you also get uh, chickens lay every 25 hours and ducks lay every single day no matter what. Um, and not sure if that production goes up in the summertime or not. Um, I have kept ducks before. We have three girls and one male in this group and uh, I am really, really hoping that they can hatch them out. And the reason for that is when baby ducks are hatched out by a mama duck, she transfers her oils over to that duck and those babies can get in the water very, very quickly without uh, getting pulled and dying. Where if, if we have them um, either incubated and then we hand raise them or you get day old hatches or that kind of stuff, you really cannot let them swim in the water or any of that kind of stuff for quite a few weeks until the babies themselves develop um, their own oils and then that can protect them from um, getting cold and dying and that is actually something that happened to these guys. I bought them as day old hatches and I lost three or four due to that last year. So we had ordered five turkeys and we have these two left and we're not sure if they're both girls or one's a girl and one's a boy. Um, they're supposed to be royal palms. Obviously there was uh, another um, contributor to that gene pool. <laughs> um, so we'll, we'll just see how they turn out. I, I do would like, to, I really would like to have a breeding pair of royal palms. I really like that uh, white bodied, black tipped look in the birds. Um, it also helps me know what year everybody was brought in and I do specific breeds each year and that way I know exactly how old an animal is based on the breed of that particular animal. Apparently it's time to feed the chickens. There they go. What's up Flapjack? Okay, not sure if we're getting this or not. So we have multiple different breeds of chickens. I ordered day old hatches, the wine and dots, the white and black ones. And those are my absolute favorite. We then had a couple at church that were moving and could not take their chickens, so we took them. So they're a, a mixed lot of birds. Some of them, we don't know which are too old 
to hatch. <laughs> The ducks absolutely crack me up. The one with the really light bill is the male and the other three with the dark bills are girls. So some of those darker chickens that you see um, actually need to be cold because they're not producing. Um, and you just don't want to feed something that's not gonna help you with your freezer. So um, that is basically today's video. Just giving you a quick tour of what we do have and why we have them. And, you know, just showing you a little bit of the system that we have. This is our very first year on this property. Um, I bought the property in April of 2020. I did live here in my RV by myself. Um, the other people that you will see on this channel was Kira, who is the daughter of some veteran friends of mine, and Kimmy, who is my best friend, um, and we met in the Army when we were 19 years old, which is many years ago. So together we're building this, um, trying to be self-sufficient self -sufficient, uh, as much as we possibly can um, out here in northern Idaho. So I hope you've really enjoyed coming along today and you know you've people that have watched that watch my regular channel because we can farms have really wanted to know more of what goes on on the rest of the farm and that's what this channel is going to be about and basically it's farm to table and so we'll show you more of the farm things we'll show you pretty much everything except for building because that goes on the other channel and you could definitely subscribe to both channels we'd really appreciate it and you know give us some just some suggestions some comments some things that you want to know um i'm chomping at the bit to start a garden and get that going and that is this entire area back here behind me where the goats are so it'll hopefully be a huge garden that we can create a csa type situation and help people from church and also others in the neighborhood I apologize, a lot of times you're going to hear the generator in the background. We are off grid and that's how we get our power right now. <laughs> so. so thanks for coming along. Make sure that you subscribe and hit the bell notification so that you can get uh, all the videos that we put out, which is hopefully going to be Monday through Friday, uh, five days a week um, on this particular channel. So thanks guys. Bye. Not a helper, bud. Not really, not a helper, bud. Did you just burp? Because you stink. Hi. <laughs> I have it turned the wrong way. Okay, not sure if we're getting this or not. So we have multiple different breeds of chickens. I ordered Dale.